Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at creating our own custom shockwave effect inside of After Effects without using any third-party plugins. So let's go and take a look at what we're gonna be creating. All right, so we've got some really cool details here. We've got some particle effects. We've got some fractal noise. And you're going to find this effect is very customizable. So you can really be creative and uh, create your own looks. Now, I should tell you that we have a Shockwave particle effects collection. It's really cool. You should definitely check it out. But I wanted to try to create an effect that didn't require any third-party plugins. All right, so let's go and jump back into After Effects and get started. So the way I came up with this effect or this technique was I was looking at one of our Shockwave elements from the collection. So we can see it's like a really cool, very fluid looking particle effect. Well, I actually added the polar coordinates effect and I dropped it onto the Shockwave element. And when I turned up the interpolation, I realized that I now have a linear effect. So the Shockwave has now been turned into a linear or a straight effect. So it kind of gave me an idea. What if I created a straight effect and then did the reverse and turned it back into sort of a shockwave or a spherical effect? And so that's basically what we did. We sort of reversed engineered the shockwave and uh, came up with something pretty cool. So let's go and start building our comp. So I'm going to create a new composition. And uh, we'll call this uh, Shockwave SW, and we'll hit OK. So what I'm going to do is uh, create a new layer. So we'll do a new solid, and uh, we'll call this Wave, and we'll hit OK. Then we'll come over to the effects. Let's type in uh, Fractal Noise, and we'll drop that over here. And there's a few different effects that we want to uh, turn on. So first of all, let's turn the Invert effect on. And let's change this to dynamic progressive. So this is going to just kind of make it look a little bit more uh, tenderly, a little bit more like fire, I guess. And then we want to create a shockwave effect. So if you remember, when this effect is on, the shockwave comes from the top. So what we want to do is build the effect coming from the top down. So we're going to select the rectangle mask tool, and we're just going to draw a shape around the top portion like this. And then we're going to just do a few things. So let's keyframe the mask path, the feather, and maybe we'll move forward. Then we'll take the selection tool, drag this down a bit, maybe turn the feathering amount up, maybe keyframe the expansion as well. So let's see here. That looks pretty cool. And then we're going to add some animation to the evolution. So let's alt click on the evolution, type in uh, time times, I don't know, 150. And what this will do is over time, it will sort of randomly phase that fractal noise. So it'll just give us a little bit more life. And the other thing I want to do is I want to animate the transform of the fractal noise. So we'll open this up and I want to change the offset turbulence. And so you can see what this does is basically moves around the position of the effect. So if we keyframe this, and I'm hitting you, by the way, to uh, show the keyframes, and we'll move this over, and we want to go ahead and move it down. I want the effect to move down in the direction that it's going, kind of like uh, momentum, if you will. And I'm actually going to take all of these keyframes, select them, and we can right click and choose keyframe easy ease or just hit F9. Maybe add a little bit of feathering to the initial. And the other thing I want to do is fade it out. So what we'll do is we'll take the brightness and uh, we'll hit U, turn it down until the fractal is gone. And I might go to the very beginning and do the same thing so that it pops on really quickly, maybe over like three or four frames. And then fades out. Now this is looking pretty slow, so we'll take all of our keyframes, hit F9, 
and bring them a bit closer. So let's see. Set the work area in, and then we can preview over here. So that looks pretty cool. We could play around with this as uh, as we go, but just to be able to see what this looks like as a shockwave, let's create an adjustment layer. So we'll call this uh, shockwave polar, and we'll type in uh, the effect called polar coordinates, and we'll put this on the adjustment layer. Then if we turn the interpolation up, set this to rectangle to polar, we're going to start seeing a bit of this shockwave. All right, so that looks pretty cool. So this is kind of the basic idea. We have this first layer of our shockwave, and let's go ahead and turn off the filter for the shockwave, and let's create another copy. So hit Control D or Edit Duplicate, and we'll set it to Screen, and now we want to offset some of the settings here. So I want to create one that is maybe a little bit faster. So we'll take the keyframes, select them, and move them closer. Let's also go to the fractal noise effect and maybe turn the random seed to something different. Maybe change the speed of the evolution to say 250. And that will basically make it animate a little bit faster. And maybe even play around with the feathering. So let's see. Let's have the feathering turned up a little bit more initially. And our offset See if we can maybe get that to move a little bit faster by moving that offset position down. So this is kind of creating multiple levels of the fractal noise. And we can even play with the complexity of the fractal noise, which will you know add a little bit more detail. We could even change the scale. This is really where you can start being creative. You could turn the contrast down. And uh, you know you can have some fun with that. Let's go and make one more copy. So we'll take the bottom copy. I want to start from that original copy. Control D, and we'll put it at the very top. Set it to screen. And for this copy, I want to make uh, some pretty substantial modifications to this. So again, let's go to the options, change the uh, random seed, and we're going to add another cool effect. This effect is called CC Glass, and we're going to take it. We're going to apply it directly below the fractal noise. And we're going to go to the surface and turn the bump map layer off. And what this will do is use itself as the bump map layer. So if we set the displacement to a negative value, you can see we start choking that uh, you know fractal noise and creating kind of almost a more of a liquidy type of effect. And so now if we turn them all on, we have to add a little contrast to a few of these. You know, we can see a much different effect. Now, for this particular one, I want to go ahead and slow it down. So I'm actually going to take the keyframes and move them over a bit so that none of these shockwaves are going the same speed. We want them to all be slightly at a different speed so it looks like there's more uh, detail. And now let's go and turn on the shockwave polar coordinates effect. Starting to look a little bit more organic. And uh, I mean, look at that. That's pretty cool looking. And uh, you should probably check out the color vibrance effect. Uh, it's a free plugin that we created that really helps colorize uh, elements inside of After Effects. In fact, I know I said I didn't use any third party plugins, but that wasn't true. And that is the color vibrance effect. So we'll drop that on here and we can just start playing around with you know, the colorization. We can turn up the brightness. All right, so we've got the basic shockwave ready to go. And if I take the copy that we added our CC glass, we can maybe punch this up a little bit more, maybe turn the height up, which will give it a much more kind of a liquidy effect and maybe brighten it up even. Now, at this point, we don't actually need the colorization uh, because we're going to probably do that in a separate pass, but that just kind of helps see how it's coming along. All right, so there is one technical issue, and that is we can see a seam. There's a seam right here where the circle effect 
comes together. Now, there's a lot of different ways to fix this, um, but I've actually come up with a really simple way. So if you've ever done a seamless background or you're trying to tile something that doesn't wrap, here's a really, really cool trick. So create an adjustment layer and come over here and type in offset. Drop this onto the adjustment layer and offset the layer over. So as we slide it over, we can see the seam is now in the middle. And it's pretty noticeable, right? And so what you're going to do is take a mask and on that adjustment layer, we're going to draw a box around the seam. So just like that. And then we're going to set the mask to subtract, then hit F or bring up the mask feather properties. Hide the mask real quick. And we're going to turn up the feather amount. So what we've done is we've offset it so that we can find the seam. And then we subtracted that area out. So essentially, we have now created a perfectly seamless shockwave effect. So watch this. If I take this and put this edge cleaning effect below the shockwave, now the polar coordinates effect will happen last and we have completely eliminated the seam. All right, so let's go and move on to the next step. If you want to customize it more, you can go into the fractal noise and really just start playing around with the settings like the scale of the noise will really make a difference. And now you'll notice the nice thing is that no matter what you do, everything is automatically tiling so we don't have to worry about any seam issues that uh, might come up. All right, so we've got our shockwave here. It's looking really good, but there's a couple of things we can do to make it a little bit more energetic, and that is to do a slight time remapping. So what we're going to do is take the SW comp and drop it into a new composition. And what I'm going to do is right click and choose time enable time remapping. And what this will allow us to do is make this feel like a more explosive shockwave. So let's go to about right here, which is sort of the climax area, maybe about 15 frames in. And we'll set a keyframe. And check this out. And we'll take these two keyframes, the first and last keyframe. And we'll slide them over to maybe frame seven, so or maybe frame six. And this way it's going to be a lot faster. So if we select the value time remap. We can look at the graph view. So this gives us a little bit of an indication. We've sped up the first few frames and so it's kind of going up the hill faster and then it's going a little bit slower in real time. But what I want to do is smooth this point out. So what I can do, right click and choose keyframe easy ease in. And then if we look at the graph view you can see that it's sort of gradually going into this straight line. But I want to tweak this a little bit. What I like to do is kind of follow the line and use the handle to sort of influence that velocity. So that looks pretty good. Maybe it's a little too fast, but it feels more explosive to me rather than it just sort of fading on. So here's what we'll do. We'll take these two keyframes, the middle one and the first one. And maybe we'll just move them over, maybe three or four frames. One, two, three. Page up, page down. We'll move frame by frame, by the way. And we'll slide them over. And let's go and take a look. The other thing we can do is we can actually scale this effect up. So, for example, I can take this point in time, hit S, set a keyframe for scale go to the beginning and maybe set this down to 25 and maybe set an easy ease F9 so that it's going to slowly ease into the 100% uh, maybe even just kind of stretch that out so that it grows really fast and then slows down to the normal size I think this looks pretty good I gotta tell you it's always a risk whenever you do a tutorial that uh, it's not going to look as good as you want it to because you're sort of doing it live, all the pressure's on, everyone's expecting it to be good, but uh, I'll take good enough. I'll take good enough for sure. So once we have the shockwave, 
we're going to pre-render it out. So we have this basic shockwave. I know what you're thinking. Hey, that doesn't look anything like the shockwave in the example. Well, we're starting out with this one element, and then I'm going to show you how to combine it to create a really cool explosive shockwave. So what we're going to do is add this to the render queue, and I'm going to set this to uh, QuickTime and uh, Photo JPEG. You can come in here, click Photo JPEG, and uh, just save it off someplace. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just import that video right back into our own project. And so now I've got a quick time of that nice shockwave element. So now I'm going to drop this into a new comp and we can start creating a more ambitious looking shockwave. So one thing I like to do is add a little bit of a sharpen. So an unsharp mask is going to really make this pop. So check this out. That's cool. And maybe I'll take a copy, control D, set it to screen. We want actually to set both of these to screen because we're going to switch them around. And I'm going to hit the rotation tool. I'm going to rotate this, hit the S tool. I'm going to scale this. And I can even add a curves adjustment to just start modifying the uh, contrast a little bit. So here we have two copies. And let's just preview that for a second. That's cool. Maybe we'll scale this down even more, 40%. But like that. It's nice. And maybe we'll take another copy, Control D, and let's scale it up even larger. Maybe we'll add a little bit of a contrast curve. We could take the sharpening off, kind of dim this out a bit. And we always want to kind of rotate it as well so that it changes the angle. That's cool. Now, there's some other cool things that we can do to these radial effects. So, for example, I could take this interior explosion effect and add the bulge effect. So, if we type in bulge, drop that out here. And you can see it comes with some control handles. We can actually grab those change them to the size of the shockwave. Let's just make sure it's a uh, squared value, 190 by 190. And using the bulge height, we can actually pinch this effect or stretch it out into a more circular effect. So if we stretch it out, you're going to see this kind of like ring type of effect that you see from the original example I did. And maybe we duplicate it rotate one of them and maybe scale it down and let's change the settings. So this is really where you just want to play around. So let's do like a negative value. We want to create that kind of stretched particle effect. So let's scale this up. But we want to try to maintain some of that stretching. That's cool. Uh, let's make sure this is squared, 130 by 130. Nice. And maybe we'll take one of these copies, scale it up a bit more so that they're not just aligned. And again, this is really just about messing around. It's like rotating uh, the effect, scaling it, uh, layering it, adding, you know, like a different contrast. Like this could just be some really highlight areas using the curves contrast. And maybe, you know, you're building in some sort of micro detail. Uh, oh, the other thing is that we can change the speed of some of these. So, for example, let's duplicate that control D. And I know I'm going fast here. I'm, I'm really just trying to illustrate that there's no right way to do this. You just kind of play around. But what I'm going to do is time remap this to 50%, which will be twice as fast, as you can see. And let's scale it up a bit. We might play with the bulge settings a bit. And what that will do is kind of have that initial shockwave. But because it's so large, it's already huge. So let's keyframe the scale a bit. Hit F9. And so now we've created sort of like this double shockwave. So let's scale it down just a little bit. 
Maybe it needs some more easing. We can stretch that out a bit. Just want to keep looking at the animation. You want to kind of get a, get a sense for its momentum. I mean, this is looking really, really cool. I think it's looking better than the uh, you know example I actually spent time on. And here I'm just throwing this together. Let's uh, jump into just a few colorization tricks. So let's create an adjustment layer. And we're going to use the color vibrance effect. And, uh, and you don't have to use it. I don't know why you wouldn't. It's free. But if you want to just colorize it using curves, you can. Uh, I've done this in the past. You can just kind of play around with the color channels. And uh, you can, you know, it's definitely a good skill. You definitely want to be able to customize your colorization. That's looking pretty sharp. We're using color vibrance, right? This is 2014. So we're just going to change some colors here. We can turn up the brightness. Uh, we have the gamma to make it a little more punchier. And let me get the glow effect. I do want to have a glow before. Set this to screen. Increase that a bit. Maybe lower it. All right. All right, so this is looking pretty sharp. Um, you know, I wouldn't probably change too much. So I want to add some flying uh, particles. So what I'll do is create a white solid. And we'll take the pixel poly effect. You guys know this effect. It's a classic. And we'll take a ellipse and we'll just draw a circle right in the middle. So let's see here. And we'll turn the gravity off. Uh, we'll turn up uh, the spinning to like two. Direction randomness. Speed randomness. Definitely going to want some of that. And a lower grid spacing will make the smaller points. And if we wanted to add some motion blur, maybe we'll make this actually smaller. Seems like there's too many. We could add uh, motion blur using a uh, force motion blur. And if you want less particles, just size down the shape of the area you're on. And then let's just drop this below. Check it out. So do you see that with just a little bit of work, I actually made the design worse. So I'm really good at this. Um, maybe I would bring the, the speed down so that it doesn't outpace the rest of the design and maybe just like a lot less particles. And maybe smaller particles. So if we make the grid smaller. All right, so that's looking pretty fun. You know, this is just a, a really fun effect and, uh, you know, I hope you guys like it. Uh, and you could really do a lot with it. So not to just keep adding on to it, but I took some fire elements from our Action Essentials 2 pack. So I just created a line of fire. And using the same technique, I actually wrapped it around a sphere or a render of a basketball. And uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, you can just kind of see. Uh, we've got this nice cool ring of fire and uh, just, you know, added a basketball with element. All right, well, I hope you guys had a good time checking out the tutorial. I uh, hope it wasn't too long. I just try to make it as complete as possible. And, of course, we appreciate your support. And although we have a Shockwave product that is for sale, we wanted to be able to show you guys something really cool that you could do on your own without having to buy stuff. But please check out our products page. You know, if you see any tools or plugins that might help you out on your production, you know, we really appreciate the support. and It just helps us do more of this stuff in the future. All right, thank you guys for watching. I'm Andrew Kramer, and we will see you next time. I better get out of here.